what you have done. Now, they are really mad at us. I told you not to touch their robot equipment. Why did you do it? As a scientist, who is also such a cute robot, I was programmed to explore and experience new scientific things. The equipment that was shown to us was interesting. It was Omi's idea, Professor. Waha, I didn't do it. You were the one who touched it. You're the culprit. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Stop pretending to be innocent. Huh? Why you... Stop arguing. We have a big problem here. We must find a way to escape from that big spaceship. I'll have to put my brain into action. Hey, I have a brain too. Yeah, you should bring it along sometime. Ha 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 ha. Okay, let's see now. How do we get out of this? Hmm. Yup, I have a good idea. Look, they are stopping. Ah, uh, they are trying to see their way through. <laughs> Maybe the aliens have no brains, just like you, homie. <laughs> okay. Now the autopilot is on. Whoa, you did it, Professor. Wow, what a brainy person you are. <laughs> well, that's how Professor Gloop used the power of his brain to save us. Now it's time for you guys to activate the power of your brains to what else? Learn about the brain! <laughs> yes, the brain. What do we know about the brain? Okay, let's see this. The brain is the boss of your body. It is a part of your nervous system. It is located inside your skull. The brain is pale grey and looks like a small cauliflower. <laughs> it controls everything you do even when you're asleep. The human brain is very complex, even more complex than a computer. Did you know that the human brain can grow? Professor, of course the brain can grow just like any human body from small to big. From a baby to an adult. Oh no, you misunderstood what I said. What I meant was that... The weight of the brain has changed. It has become heavier. Scientists have found out that in the early 1800s, the average weight of a male brain was 3 pounds. Now, a man's brain weighs an average of 3 and 1 8 pounds. So, the brain is growing. Ha! <laughs> wow! Now, let's see what's inside a brain. The brain contains an estimated 100,000 million nerve cells with more than 1,000 miles of nerve fibers per cubic centimeter. The brain weighs about 3 pounds by the time it reaches adulthood. We need our brain to talk, think, read, run, dream, color, cry, breathe, scream, wave. Blink. Basically everything we do. Who? Oh. Really? That much to do, huh? It's like a high-tech computer or something. Aha! Uh -huh. That's what you think. Like I said before, although a brain has been compared to a computer, it is far more superior than any computer ever built. Yep, if Professor Gloop say so, it must be true. Cooey! Now, let's see some more details about the brain.
Let's look at Professor Gloop's brain, for example. It has 40% grey matter and 60% white matter. This is found inside his skull. The brain has three main parts. The cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. An adult human brain weighs about 1,400 grains. A newborn baby's brain weighs less than 400 grams. As a child grows, the number of cells remain more or less the same, but the cells grow in size and the number of connections increase. The human brain reaches its full size when a person is about 6 years of age. The brain is a complex organ. It controls the body, receives information and stores information as memories. I understand that part, but how does the brain actually work? You said you understand, but it looks like you don't understand. <laughs> Okay, oh, trying to test me, huh? Okay, let's see. Okay, look at Professor Gloop. Huh? He is now thinking of drinking that glass of water. He has been holding it for quite a while now. His brain is now producing electrical signals which, together with chemical reactions, allow different parts of the body to communicate. Now the nerves send these signals throughout the body. In this case, the signals are sent to his hand. Now the hand moves, and this lets Gloop drink the water. Wow! That's the first time I've seen Professor Gloop finding it hard to drink water. But actually, it takes only a few seconds to do that. Am I right? Meow? You're right about that, Gujin. Well, let's learn more about the structure of the brain. Like I said earlier, the human brain can be divided into three main parts, that is the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. Let's take a closer look. Wait, wait! How come you are the one explaining all this stuff? You're a robot! Professor Gloop should be the one doing it. Meow, meow. Give him a chance to show off. It will give me a chance to know how well his brains work and what his memory is like. I've done my research and I know I'm correct. After all, I'm the smartest robot around. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's move on. Okay, boys and girls, here we go. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain, rather like a mushroom cap covering its stalk. It makes up about 85% of the weight of the brain. It has a heavily folded grey surface, known as the cerebral cortex. The cerebrum is the thinking part of the brain and it controls your voluntary muscles when you do mathematics play games, or even draw, you are using your cerebrum. Your memory is found there too. The cerebrum is split into half. Each half is called a hemisphere. These hemispheres communicate with each other. Each hemisphere consists of several parts. They are the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. Some of the grooves on the cerebrum surface mark out different functional regions. The front section of your cerebrum, the frontal lobe, is involved in speech, thought, emotions, and skilled movements. Behind this is the parietal lobe, which perceives and interprets sensations like touch, temperature, and 
pain. Farther back in your cerebrum is a region called the occipital lobe which detects and interprets visual images. On either side of the cerebrum are the temporal lobes which are involved in hearing and storing memory. The left and right hemispheres are joined by the corpus callosum, which is a thick band of nerve fibers. This allows the two halves to communicate with each other continuously. Each hemisphere controls the opposite side of the body and takes charge of different skills. In other words, the left hemisphere controls the right side of the body while the right hemisphere controls the left side of the body. But scientists are still not 100% sure of that. They're still working on it. <laughs> People who mostly use the left side of their brain are logical thinkers. They are good at maths and science, like me. <laughs> People who mostly use the right side of their brain are creative. They are good at music, art, and languages, like me. <laughs> People who have had accidents sometimes suffer from brain damage. This is dangerous as it can affect intelligence, memory, and control of the body. The saddest thing is that people may die from injuries to the head. From these studies, it appears that the right hemisphere triggers more emotions than the left hemisphere, particularly mournful and pessimistic feelings. Oh no, oh, oh. People with a damaged left hemisphere can be extremely miserable. Patients with badly damaged right hemispheres, on the other hand, can appear to be unmoved by their misfortune, remaining optimistic in the face of extreme suffering. So, keep your head safe. So that is why motorcyclists have been told to wear helmets to protect their heads in case of accidents. So, don't forget your helmet. Meow. Okay, let's move on to the other parts of the brain. Next, the cerebellum. It is the second largest part of your brain. It is located at the back of your brain, below the cerebrum. It's about one-eighth the size of the cerebrum. It controls balance, movement, and the coordination of your muscles. It helps you to stand straight or move around and yet keeps you from falling over. Yes, that's right. I'll give you an example. Let's say you want to lift your finger to touch your mouth. Well, the motor area of your cerebral cortex controls this movement. As your finger moves up, it is coordinated by nerve signals sent from the cerebellum. That is why your finger lands on your mouth and not anywhere else. Whoa! This is quite interesting. The brain is such a small, cute thing and yet it can do so much. Just like me, I guess. <laughs> What? Give me a second. <laughs> Come on, guys. Stop that, okay? We have more important things to do than to clown around. Okay, sir. You're the boss. Let's look at the third part of the brain. The innermost part of the brain is called the brain stem. This is the part of the brain that controls things that you don't have to think about, like involuntary muscles. 
your brain stem connects your brain to your spinal cord. It is responsible for many body functions such as your heartbeat, blood pressure, digestion and breathing. The brain stem is made up of three sections called the midbrain, the pons and the medulla oblongata. The midbrain is a path on which nerve signals are sent from the brain stem to the left and right hemispheres of your brain. It is also the place from which messages that have to do with hearing and sight are sent to the brain. Your pons is a bridge-like structure. It connects different parts of your brain together. It serves as a relay station from the medulla oblongata to your cerebral hemispheres. It is responsible for helping us to breathe properly. Your medulla oblongata acts as a relay station between your spinal cord and your brain. It makes sure that your heart beats properly. It also controls your breathing and other reflex actions such as <coughs> coughing, <coughs> swallowing and <coughs> vomiting. That's it guys, the three parts of your brain. It's good for us to be well informed about our bodies. Who knows, it might save your life. Did you know? Did you know that the brain makes up about 2% of the weight of your body, yet it requires around 20% of the blood supply in your body? Did you know that information travels between your brain and the rest of your body along a thick bundle of nerves in your spine? Now you know what you didn't know, which means now you know more than what you thought you had known. Hmm? Oh, oh. Now, let's see how much your brain is protected. Your brain is perhaps the most important organ in your body. However, it is made of soft, delicate tissue that can be injured very easily. So, it is well protected by three tough membranes. The space between your brain and the membranes is filled with a fluid which cushions your brain, provides it with energy and protects it against infection. Your brain is protected by a bony shell. We call this the skull. <laughs> Recall. The brain has three main parts. The cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. It has a heavily folded grey surface known as the cerebral cortex. The cerebrum can be split into halves. Each one is called a hemisphere. Each hemisphere is made up of a frontal, parietal, occipital and temporal lobe. The left and right hemispheres are joined by the corpus callosum. The second largest part of the brain is called the cerebellum. The innermost part of the brain is called the brainstem. The brainstem is made up of three sections called the midbrain, the pons and the medulla oblongata.
today i would like to tell you more but i'll save some for the next program well i must admit it he knows so much more about the brain unfortunately he's a robot and does not have one <laughs> i beg your pardon were you talking about me mm -hmm. no uh I was, I was just telling the audience that this was really an interesting episode. <laughs> okay guys, goodbye for now. And remember, your brain is like your muscle. The more you use it, the better it works. Bye bye! Bye bye! bye, -bye.